Hello everybody, welcome to Gorgeous. Today I'll be showing you how to make a shrapnel in the arm effect using aluminum foil and scar wax. In total, this should take you around 30 minutes to complete, including making the shrapnel to put in your arm and then using the scar wax and paints to make it go around. Now what we're going to want to do first is grab your roll of aluminum foil and get a sheet depending on how big you want the shrapnel to be. Then you want to grab a hammer and some sandpaper. Then you want to take your sheet of aluminum foil and you want to fold it into a square. After you fold it into the square, take your hammer and keep on hammering it until you have a solid piece of metal. Once you have this solid piece of metal, take your sandpaper and try and grind it down to make it look like a piece of shrapnel. Now to actually make the effect, you're going to need Prozade, fake blood, scar wax, various paints, preferably one that's a skin color and a bruise color, some sponges, some paint brushes, sculpting tools, and some petroleum jelly. Now, you want to take your shrapnel and coat the bottom of it in some kind of paint, preferably black or red, when that's going to be visible. Then you want to take your prosthetic adhesive and you want to go around the wound. You got it going out enough so you're going to be able to put down the scar wax and you're not going to run into just bare skin, which won't hold the scar wax very well. Then you're going to wait for the prosthetic adhesive to dry. This is usually around 5 to 10 minutes, but if you want to speed it up, you can use a hair dryer. Next, you want to take a bit of scar wax and make a cylindrical shape with it. Make sure it's tapered at the edge and however big you want the wound to be in the middle. Next, you're going to want to make a second one and you want to place them around the wound. Now, using your fingers and tools, you want to fan them out and try to blend them into your skin as best as you can, making sure to leave room for the shrapnel that you're going to be placing in later. A good a tip is to coat your fingers and tools in Vaseline, which will make it easier to spread and move around the scar wax. Keep trying to blend in the scar wax until you finally reach a level that you're comfortable with. After you're finally done blending in with your tools, you want to move on to texturing and making sure it looks like skin. A few good techniques to make sure that this blends in properly is to take a thistle brush and go over the edges of the wound. This will make it blend into your skin better. Another technique I found that worked for me is to take a sponge and then rip off one of the layers. Once you do this, go over the scar wax to texture it and it'll look more like folds and wrinkles in your skin. And then even using a sharp tool to cut in like deep, heavy wrinkles will make it look more like your skin and help you texture in better. The next step in this process is to start painting your piece. A good start is using a yellow base for foundation. This will be the beginning of the bruise or the swelling around the cut. The next color you wanna put in is red. You can use a lot of red. It'll look like the uh, wound's infected and angry and also help when you put on the blood later. If you rip off a sponge and apply the paint with the uh, ripped up end of the sponge, it should make it look more like blood vessels and be natural looking color of your skin. You want to keep on layering these two colors to achieve a deeper and harsher looking bruise. And after this, you want to go in with washes of skin tone. You can either use the alcohol activated palettes if you have them, or even just regular cream colored makeup or your skin colored makeup would work. And you want to keep on using all of these colors until you've achieved an effect that you're okay with and that looks like it belongs to an actual wound or cut on your body. The next step in the process is to add the fake blood. Initially, you want to take a deep red and go around the wound, filling in the deep layer underneath the scar wax and the area around that. You then want to take a brush dipped in stage blood or whatever blood you happen to have on hand, and you want to add it in random varying spots all around the wound to make it look natural. Uh, another good technique to use here is either flicking the blood on or taking a paper towel and dabbing it around to make the entire area look bloody and grotesque. After this, you should have a result that looks similar to mine, or at least hopefully what you were aiming for. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I hope you learned something good, and I hopefully we see you in the next one. Stay gorgeous.